science and technology uh, catch up and give us some answers and solutions to the problems that we have with a new invasive pest. And also it's to let our trading partners know that we do take things seriously. We are trying to protect the commodities that may be moving outside of the quarantine or outside of the state or the country. Uh, so this assists in business as well, although many times business, um, it, it becomes something extra steps that you have to do. It also helps in providing trade assurances to others. What's at risk for Pennsylvania? Um, we have a forest products um, industry that's valued at over $19 billion. Um, we are fourth in grapes uh, at the tune of $4.8 billion. Apples is an $87 million and peaches are $19 million. Uh, the nursery and landscape trade, $944 million. So that's an estimated value of over $25 billion. And, you know, along with that, think of all the jobs that are associated, whether they are truckers, uh, whether they are packers, uh, haulers. So a lot of employees make all of these industries move forward. And then also the businesses that you have, you may be selling some of these commodities, you may be producing wine from some of these commodities, so it can impact what you have as well. Some of the things we do not know yet that will we feel will be impacted, property values. Um, those that are living in the quarantine area, they have populations of spotted lanternfly that are high enough that when they, they cannot sit out on their back decks, their patios, uh, play outside because the insects are in the tree and as such, they have, um, they're securing what we call honeydew, and that sounds very pleasant, but it really is not. I mean, that's extra excrement. Um, it's um, spotted lanternfly poo, and it's very sticky, and it gets on everything. And once it's on everything, it also um, promotes sooty mold, which is a black substance that covers anything and starts growing on the honeydew. So very nasty to have to keep up cleaning or as I mentioned, not being able to sit outside. Tourism, um, our state parks are number three in the nation um, with the number of acres that we have. We're actually just behind Alaska and California. And the ecosystems, we get a lot of tourism uh, that comes in because people wanna be outside because of our fishing and our, our boating and our hunting. We also have some new business initiatives that have been uh, promoted by the governor, and those would be at risk as well. The Port of Philadelphia, uh, there are new um, commodities that are being shipped from that port, and should trading partners put quarantines up against the port, it would make it more difficult and more costly for them to be able to do business. Uh, another initiative that was just begun was the PA um, preferred brew. We are the number one state with microbreweries and the governor pro is promoting a program to promote growing hops and grains um, for brewing. And unfortunately, spotted lanternfly will kill hops. Um, and in fact, just the honeydew alone getting on the flowers makes it so that you can no longer use the hops for beer production. So when we set up a quarantine, we also develop tools for compliance. These are tools that need to be used by residents and they need to be used by businesses. We have a compliance checklist that we have developed for residents and they take this, they can print it out, they check off the items that they're moving and they state that they have inspected and they sign the document and it becomes a legal document that can travel with them and either um, the products that they're moving, you know, if they sell a grill on Craigslist or playground equipment, they can move it around the quarantine and out of the quarantine because they've inspected it and they've made sure that there's no living life stage on it uh, as they move it around. For businesses, we have compliance agreements. Uh, we have businesses for uh, mulch production. And while it's important that, um, you know, if they're hauling, um, their conveyance have the permit, but because they have extra steps in the compliance um, 
role that they play, they have to sign a compliance agreement saying that they will take those extra steps to make sure that the mulch they produce is safe and has been safeguarded so they are not moving spotted lantern fly around. We can also issue a phytosanitary certificate. So if you have one load that needs to go once a year, you don't necessarily need a, an agreement, um, but you would need a phytosanitary certificate if it's going to another state. They may require it to say that the product is safe, it's been inspected, and has been safeguarded. For businesses that have conveyances like trucking companies, moving companies, um, delivery services, uh, those that are have active conveyances moving around the quarantine or out of the quarantine, we have developed a permit system. And the permits can come in one of two forms. We have hang tags for small vehicles, and we have decals for class A or large trucks uh, that would go on the outside of the vehicle. This shows uh, the community, it shows other businesses, and it shows other states that you are aware of spotted lanternfly and you are taking the necessary steps to prevent it moving with you as you do business. So as I mentioned, the checklist is for homeowners. Um, they do have the signature line. They have all the life stages on there and when to look for them so they know um, that they are checking at the right moment for the right uh, life stage. We are coming into um, egg laying season. So from now until the adults freeze out, egg masses certainly may be a part of the inspection, and when the female is ready to lay her eggs, she will lay them on any uh, flat surface. And even upside down, we have found many egg masses on the undersides of picnic tables. Uh, so when you're looking for egg masses, you have to look all around. Um, this would go for playground equipment, for ATVs, uh, lawn care equipment, anything that's stored outside, uh, residents would need to look for. Or if you have a business um, that deals with outside storage, you would also need to look for those items. The phyto phytosanitary certificate, as I mentioned, can be for a single use. It does require that an inspector come and look at the commodity that you're going to be moving. And we also may issue it for special circumstances, uh, such as you have a limited time when you're going to be producing something uh, for like Christmas trees. Um, they would sell only from, usually you buy your trees the day after Thanksgiving until Christmas. So they have a very small window of time when they would need to uh, have a certificate. The compliance agreement is offered for two years. Um, it does have additional requirements other than just conveyance uh, movement. Uh, there are additional steps that have to be taken in order to meet um, the spotted lanternfly requirements. And it would take additional time to issue and process uh, this agreement. The permitting system that we have is actually designed to help expedite business. Uh, it's less cumbersome to businesses. It does provide, um, you do have to go through a training program that takes approximately two hours, and there is an exam associated with it. And you must pass the exam to be issued the permit. And the permit is designed for businesses to designate either the owner, a supervisor, or a manager. This is not something that every employee is going to take for all your businesses. So we do encourage owners, managers, and supervisors to be the one to be responsible for the training and the exam, and then to train the employees afterwards. So why a permit? It's to raise awareness and, to under, and the understanding. Uh, businesses have to train their employees on the life cycle, when to look for the insect and those life cycles, and what to do when you find it. It's to help continue movement of product and services. We understand you have business to do. You have to keep maintaining um, an income so that you can pay your employees, so that you can continue to buy other services and products to bring to promote your business. Uh, the permit is much less burdensome than a compliance agreement. 
A compliance agreement is going to take several hours on your part as well as an inspector's part uh, to complete and to move forward. And the permit also gives you the opportunity to tell the community you take this seriously, you are doing those things that you can to prevent the movement of spotted lanternfly. They see the permits, they see the tags, and also those that um, get a permit or a compliance agreement are listed on the PDA website as a participant in the program. And I do regularly get calls, people wanting to know who they should contact as a mover, as a trucker, and I refer them to the web page so that they can see the list of businesses there. We only put those that have passed the test um, and are legal to operate within the quarantine or out of the quarantine area. What you need to know. We require all businesses, we require all federal, state, and local agencies. So all the Commonwealth agencies are currently going through the permitting and training system uh, to also have those hang tags uh, in their vehicles or the decals if they are driving larger trucks. We require, require it of our federal partner. Um, and also the university, so Penn State Extension, you will see that they also have the tags. So this is for everybody. Uh, the training is online and it is offered through Penn State. They have done a very nice job working with uh, PDA to develop this program. It does take one to two hours, but you can take it at your leisure and you can do, um, if you only have a half hour block, you can take the half hour, do what you can, and then come back into it. So it is something you can put down and pick up as you need to. Um, there are also some face-to-face -face trainings. We recognize that some businesses do not have access to online uh, capabilities, so we are working with Penn State Extension to promote face-to-face -face trainings and testing, uh, that PDA would do the testing and Penn State would do the training. So that is something that if you need that, um, we can make that available for you. The exam is offered online as you are doing the training, and if you need a face to face training, we would coordinate uh, to have paper copies, do it the old fashioned way. Um, it is administered by PDA staff and it is a multiple choice exam. The permit is trying to minimize movement of the pest. This insect uh, in the adult stage and also in the egg mass stage moves very readily with people and with conveyances. So by minimizing the movement, not only just outside the quarantine, but within the quarantine, uh, you'll see with this map that um, there are a lot of red dots in the center, and then as you go out from there, the red dots get fewer and fewer. The red dots are very small populations, and that's what USDA is working on right now. They're going to those small populations and treating the trees, and eventually they will start pushing inward on the higher population. Currently, PDA is working within the high density of those red dots, uh, treating high-risk pathways pe where people come together. Uh, so we've done a racetrack in there. We've done... Um, a couple of fairgrounds that are rather large. We've also, so, also done um, some large retail areas or some high path traffic areas. So we're looking at the greatest risk and how we can try and minimize movement out of the quarantine. If you transport materials out of the state, whether it is you transporting it or whether you hire a company to do it for you. Please know that currently there are roadside inspections being conducted by New York and also New Jersey and Maryland. And what will happen if you do not have a permit, okay? If, you do, if the trucker does not have a permit, for New York, they will take the name of the trucking company, they will um, issue them what they refer to as a notice of rejection. They will allow the load to go through. However, 
they are going to operate under a three strikes you're out rule. So if the trucking company passes through a roadside check three times and still has not gotten their permit, there is a chance they will turn that truck around and not allow entry into New York. So it is very important that if you are hauling your own items or if you hire someone, make sure the companies that you hire have their permits. Other states are looking for them. Currently, uh, Pennsylvania is working under a grace period, so we're trying to get the word out, get people trained, get them through the exam, and get the permits issued. But we, too, will be doing roadside checks at some point when the grace period has ended. We will uh, advertise that. We will let you know. And again, we would work under a similar um, method as New York. If we find you the first time, we're going to issue you a warning. Um, but the more times you are, you your name pops up in the system, the more likely you are to have a, a load rejected and refuse to let it move forward. So again, we want compliance assistance. We want to help you get what you need to continue your business. But we will be looking to do roadside inspections as other states are. And we will also be doing roadside inspections for other states that have spotted lanternfly. Currently, we know that Virginia and New Jersey have populations. Uh, so eventually, we will be doing roadside checks to make sure that their companies are shipping safe product to Pennsylvania. I was at a national meeting recently, and we it was determined that um, other states like New York, New Jersey, and Maryland uh, they like the system that we have for the permits. Uh, they agree that they think that the training and the testing is invaluable, and they too are looking to put up similar systems in place for their states. So if you know of companies that work out of state or that are out of state, you can ask them to go to the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture webpage, and they would be able to go um, and look for uh, the testing that's available for out-of-state companies and we can work with the states that they originate from and help them get their permits as needed. How do you know if your business needs a permit? On our web page there is a document that gives you some examples. Um, you know, going from uh, the Dunkin' Donuts, um, do I need a permit? Well, Dunkin' Donuts, no. However, you know, who's shipping to you? The truckers that come and provide the supplies, they need to have a permit. If you, as I mentioned, if you're a moving company and you have your own trucks, uh, you need to be permitted. Uh, the local CPA, no. They don't need to be permitted. So this document will give you some examples uh, so that you are better prepared. Um, if you're still not sure, we do have a, an email. It's slfpermit at pa.gov. And you can send your questions there, and they will be answered. Who should take the training? As I mentioned, owners, supervisors, and managers. Somebody designated by the company. Uh, someone who is going to make sure that training is available to all employees and is going to do the record keeping that needs to be done, showing that the training has been completed. And I often get, well, how many supervisors should do that? We are flexible. We want to work with your company. Your company may have only 10 employees, so one person designated by the company to take the training is sufficient. If you have 2,000 employees, uh, think of span of control. How many people do you have that work directly under one supervisor or one manager? And that's the manager that should take the test. We do not want to have 2,000 individuals testing for the same company. That would not be beneficial to us or to you. It takes a lot of time to process all of that. So, um, and make sure that the records are kept appropriately for your business. So it really is important to look at your span of control and see how large your company is. And if you have a designated HR department uh, that provides all the training, you know, that might be the appropriate people to take the test and provide training for you. 
So once you pass the exam, what do you do? You can print out your certificate um, that comes for, to you over the internet um, once you complete the exam and pass. Print that out and you can make copies of that as your temporary permit until your official permit arrives to you. You can start training your employees immediately. For the Penn State webpage, they have documents that you can print out uh, so that, and they will uh, give you clues as they are going through saying this would be a great training piece for your employees. So you can print those out, provide them to the employees. Um, Determine how you're going to capture the inspections. Think about what you do every day in your business. Uh, if you have vehicles, are you doing a safety check each day? And if you are, then here is the moment then that you would take to say, oh, okay, I do a safety check. Let's put a spotted lantern fly note on there. And it can simply say, I inspected for spotted lantern fly. I found some. This is what I did. Or no, I did not find any. It can be a part of a trip log. Again, what does your business do every day? We are not advocating that you have to create new paperwork. I know everybody does enough of that every day. So if you can find a way to work it into your business, please do so. And we can work with you, and you would teach the inspectors coming in on how you capture the information. But Penn State also has some templates that they can provide to you on examples of how to keep some of the records. Um, the official permit will be mailed to you uh, or mailed to the business, and it will include a hang tag or the decal if you have Class A or very large vehicles. Um, so um, once that is done, then your name also goes on the web page so that you are now listed as a participant in the compliance program. Out of state shippers coming to Pennsylvania, um, if there is a recognized population in that state, wherever it is in that state, that is what we are, our quarantine states is now um, under our quarantine in Pennsylvania once they cross over. Uh, we do require permits from vehicles from quarantined areas and they can take the test um, and we will issue a permit to them. So if you are dealing with out-of-state trucking companies, please make sure they know and are aware of the permit and that they know how to get one. We are also working with the Plain Sect, the Amish community. Uh, we understand that they provide goods and services too. So we are working, uh, that's where a lot of the face-to-face -face meetings would come from, uh, so that we can teach them what they need to do, um, including their hired drivers. If they are working in the quarantine area and out of the quarantine area, they too need to have a permit. Um, so we work with them in educating and testing. So uh, if you have those in the playing sect community and they want to make sure that they are compliant, uh, the best way to help them right now is to send them to their local Penn State Extension County office. Uh, they can pick up some checklists there and they can also inquire about training and testing if they need to have uh, those done. We are working many different avenues to try and get the message out. Webinars such as this is very helpful to us. Uh, we hope that it will be uh, of value to you and to the other members of um, the business community. But we're also working with uh, groups like PLNA, Penn Ag. Uh, we attend many meetings for uh, green industry growers, dairy and hardwood, farm show, there'll be a um, booth available at farm show and Ag Progress Days. We also had um, a whole section of a building dedicated to education about spotted lantern fly. We do Facebook and Twitter, so if you use these digital tools, uh, please friend us on Facebook and you will get regular updates. Uh, we are using list, list serves to email messaging and we can also help develop some newsletter articles if that is a, a method you would prefer. You may start seeing these business cards around. It is um, to promote the permit program. As I mentioned, um, our 
email address is slfpermit at pa.gov. And Amy Higley, who is the permit uh, queen for Spotted Lantern Fly monitors that and she is capable of answering any questions that you have about it. If you need to report Spotted Lantern Fly, you can dial 888 for bad fly to get that information that goes into a database that we have worked with Penn State to develop. Uh, so that puts you on the map. And, you know, please understand we want to get to as many properties as we can, but funding will limit that as well as the availability of human resources. Uh, but getting your name in the database is very important because we do use that uh, to determine work for PDA as well as the United States Department of Agriculture who's working with us on, working with us on this project. Here are some good links for you to know. Uh, this is the online training exam link information and then again there is the um, email account for spotted lantern fly permit you have heard me talk about penn state and usda we operate under what we term as a unified command so all of three all three of us are equal partners and we each have roles to play usda is providing um, much of the funding that we are currently using for survey treatment and research. Uh, Tim Newcamp is the state plant health director. He's located in Carlisle. Uh, Dr. Dennis Calvin with Penn State, he is in charge of special projects and Spotted Lantern Fly certainly is a special project and he oversees all the research that is being conducted and also the outreach messaging that comes from Extension. And I do have to say that we're very lucky. Uh, Dr. Julie Urban is located at Penn State University and she is a renowned um, expert in spotted lanternfly. Um, the family Flagord is one that she has studied for many years, so we are very lucky to have her in position here with Penn State University heading up the research work that is going on there. Um, I am Dana Rhodes. I am the State Plant Regulatory Official for PDA, and as I mentioned before, PDA is currently working uh, treatments within the heavily populated area in towards the center of the quarantine. We are also doing uh, responsible for all of the statewide survey that's going on outside of the quarantine. Uh, so any reports that we get of new finds, we do take them very seriously. They are investigated and we set up survey as needed. If we uh, find a small population, we do act immediately to eradicate and control. Uh, so it is all of us plus other universities and other federal agencies working together as well as DCNR, DEP, PennDOT, um, many state agencies all working together to try and contain and control and eventually eradicate this pest. Are there any questions for me? Um, if you have any questions, you can type them in to uh you can, you can type them and I will read them out loud and, and Dana will answer them. Could you repeat the links for the SLF information? 
certainly. Um, to get to Penn State, actually the easiest way to get to it is to Google PSU Spotted Lanternfly and the first thing that pops up is the Penn State Extension webpage. And if you are going to, if you'd like to go to the PDA website, it's www.agriculture.pa.gov and you, there is an icon under Hot Topics. You can click on Spotted Lanternfly and that will take you to the Spotted Lan Lanternfly landing page. And if you scroll to the bottom of the landing page, there are some blue box there. Uh, and the quarantine is one. Uh, homeowner information is there, as well as just general information and resources. And then if you need to email about permits, it's slf at pa.gov. Are there any more questions? Just type them in if you have any more and we'll answer them. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, then um, thank you, Dana, so much for um, giving us all this wonderful information. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Margaret. Oh, wait, we do have one more question. Okay. <laughs> is, is it possible to get a copy of the presentation? And I actually can answer this. Um, I will uh, post it on our website afterwards. Uh, I'm not sure how long it'll take, but it, um, I will get a copy up. So uh, thank you, everybody, and, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.